when you look at some of the personalities in the Hindu tradition, they reflect this personality. For example, the one that I find very much reflecting this third personality, the third personality is Shiva. When I say, has Shiva ever taken birth on earth? When you do the story of Rama and you say Hanuman was actually, if you like, an incarnation of Shiva, helping out Ram. You know, Ram gets into difficulties, so of course Shiva has to come and sort him out. And then, you see, when I look at Swami Vivekananda, I look at this personality sitting in meditation, I say, ah, that is a piece of Shiva that fell down to earth. You see? So you can say Shiva perhaps did not take birth, but when I look at some of these personalities, Everything that can be attributed to Shiva can be attributed, attributed to such personalities. So what are the key features of Shiva? First of all, the name Shiva itself signifies something unique that is necessary. You see, when you want to build relation with this super personality, say Vishnu, uh, you know, coming down to earth as Ram or Krishna, you need to build up a relationship. And of course, the only way the relationship comes to fruition is if they give their grace to you. They say, okay, I like you, so you can see me now and I'll pull you towards me. You need grace of God. There's God and there's God's grace. With Shiva, you get two for the price of one. So you get God and God's grace combined. Shiva means grace. So it is not God, but it's a God and God's grace rolled together. That's the meaning of the word Shiva. And what are the unique features of this Shiva? Makes him very endearing. And a lot of people are attracted to Shiva because the reason is this. Shiva is called Ashutosh. It means easy to please. You see, this Vishnu is a tricky chap. He takes a lot of hard work. You know, like poor Dhru had to spend so many days and months and years meditating and Vishnu was a tricky chap. With Shiva, things are easy peasy. A little bit of Bilva leaves. He says, yeah, what do you want now? <laughs> no, he pops up straight away. He's a kind of easy chap because I told you his name is Grace. So when you say Shiva, you invoke this grace straight away. You say, yeah, yes, what can I do for you? Straight away. Mm -hmm. Asutosh. Well, when I say easy to please, what does it mean? The ritualistic aspect that is visible, say in the Vaishnavite tradition, they are elaborate. The worship is very elaborate. You must do this, 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 this. You must follow through, otherwise Vishnu will get mad at you. Instead of being happy with you, he'll be really annoyed with you. But Shiva may say, make a mess. He says, ah, oh, my sweet boy, he's making a mess, but he loves me. Off he comes, straight away. He said, come, go away, Shiva, I didn't ask for you. But, no, but you were praying, you know. Easy to please. In the ritualistic aspects, cut to the minimum. Minimum. This is why it's called Ashutosh. Easy to please. Special feature. Another feature about Shiva that you like, is this, that I like, is this. You see, with the Vaishnavite tradition, you can never really bridge the gap between the idea of God as some super personality you're building links with and God as your essential nature. That remains distant. You are not even allowed to think like that. You are nobody. God is everything and you are nobody. You are made to think like that. In fact, the way you can distinguish between the Shiva and the, and the Vaishnava tradition, tradition is very nice. It's Hari Hara. You heard the word Hari Hara. Hari means one who attracts. So Vishnu he looks very grand, well dressed, you know, and he's always so attractive. And Shiva is on the other extreme. Hara, Harati from Harati. He's going to demolish all this grandier business. Ro, he's Ro. So even you see Shiva, any grand, do you see golden thrones or anything like that? No, just ash, poor chap, ash, and little animal skin around his waist, and that's Shiva. So he's broken through all this nonsense. He said, no, there are two ways of making spiritual progress. First, you get attracted to these marvelous godly qualities of Vishnu and Ram and Krishna. The second way to make spiritual progress is to recognize that all this is external, superficial. I want the heart of the matter. I want spirit. So I'm going to do Harati, remove this distraction of external showmanship and go to the heart of the matter. This is the feature of Shiva. That's why it's Hari, Harati. There's a difference between Hari and Hara. You see, with Shiva, this unique feature is visible. Not only can you relate to God as some super being that you say, Oh God, I love you. Please show your grace on me. He says, Don't you see? I am your essential nature. I am very much part of you. Where else will you search for me? I am your innermost self. So with the Shiva tradition, you have this unique feature. You can say, you can equate yourself with Shiva. In the Vaishnava tradition, if you went to any Vishnu temple and started saying you are equal to Vishnu, 
four people will come and do tinga tori and throw you out. You know, how dare you, he's an arrogant chap. In the Shiva tradition, if you don't do it, they say he's not understood the whole idea of Shiva. And this is the lovely stuff from Adi Shankara. One of the, it's, it's quoted in, your, in the notes. It says, you can say, Shivo hum, Shivo hum. And this is not an arrogant comment. It is it's a very humbling comment saying, my essential nature, despite external appearance of being a real idiot and real nuisance, my essential nature, oh Lord, is you, Shiva, Shivo hum, Shivo hum. I am thee, my Lord. Now you see, have you noticed in the Vaishnava tradition, you have different ways of relating to God. You say, okay, um, Dasya bhav, Vatsalya bhav, Sakya bhav, uh, Madhur bhav, lovely, lovely ways of relating to God. In the Shiva tradition, what, what power do you have? What is the closest relationship you can have with anybody? Tell me. With yourself. See the power of Shiva tradition. He's saying, don't you see? The, the, the closest relationship you have with anything, forget about God, is an external thought. It's just a thought process. It's your true self, with your true being. So the idea of the Shiva tradition is build relation with your true self. So begin to ignore your, your false or this external self, which is quite a nuisance anyway, and recognize your true, true, true being as one with God, as Shiva. It's not an arrogant comment. It is saying, don't you see, the closest you can get to anybody is to yourself. And your real self is Shiva, Shivoham, Shivoham, very visible in the Shiva tradition. There's another lovely feature to the Shiva tradition that you must immediately recognize and give full marks. In the Vaishnava tradition, the idea of female is still secondary, even though they say, no, 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 that's the power of God and all that. It's still secondary, because when you see Vishnu, you know, lying you know, on the bed of serpent, and who is massaging his feet day and night, day and night, poor Lakshmiji. You can give her grandia, say, oh, Lakshmiji means, you know, but why is she massaging all the time? It's not fair. With the Shiva tradition, it's equal emphasis paid to both the genders. And you see this marvelous idea of Earth Narishwar. First time, the idea that God and God's power are strongly linked. You cannot separate them. Given dignity, equally, you know, making bringing the idea of equality, very, making it very visible. Artha Narishwara, the idea that God can be thought of as female too. So this idea, again, not in the Vaishnava tradition, in the Shiva tradition. So I'm just you know, scoring points for the Shiva tradition now, of course. But then when I talk of Vishnu, I say, oh, I love them as well. So you get caught up. When you look at them, they go there. So why am I saying this? Because it's, you should be able to recognize that the reason why Hindus don't feel, un, you know, they don't feel that something has gone wrong, they're not scoring points, they're saying that the way your mental makeup is will decide which particular aspect of Godhead you are attracted to. So your own mental makeup in a way will dictate whether you're attracted to Ram, goody goody straightforward chap, Krishna this naughty chap with pluralism, or Shiva who gives you the highest dignity. You decide. So in a way it allows us this opening of thinking about spirituality in a variety of different ways. It is open to that. So these are the unique features of the Shiva tradition. Free e-learning course in Hinduism. To register, please visit www.hindu-academy.com. Talks on Hinduism. Sponsored by People Care. Encouraging caring for the elderly in their own homes. For more information, please visit peoplecare.com.